Hey there riders, Moto Journo Chris here today and can I introduce you to my new motorcycle? No, no, unfortunately not. This is the Moto Hub Honda Transalp demo bike and I've borrowed it for the day to do a video and hopefully it will be my next bike. I've just got to convince the missus, but we've been talking about getting a two up bike. We were thinking in 2024 and so it may be next year, but maybe we'll be able to bring it forward. Overall, I think the Transalp to me basically represents everything I loved in the Honda Hornet, but obviously being an adventure, light adventure, I guess you'd say, it is quite a flexible option, which is a little bit more suited to the two up, to a little bit of touring, a little bit of adventure, and it still, I think, will handle the sports riding quite easily. It'll do the commuting, as I found leaving Sydney today. It's a nice, tractable machine. That new 270 degree parallel twin engine from Honda is an absolute gem. Uh, I don't know that it's better in the Transalp than in the Hornet, however, it's exceptional. And while I did find the, the throttle response in standard mode, once I got going, and was having a little bit of a crack. I felt, oh, the engine's a little bit down-tuned compared to the Hornet. However, what I really realized was I just needed to put in sport mode and everything got a lot spicier and a lot more instant as far as the throttle response and the engine character. And once I did that, I thought it was pretty much on par with the Honda Hornet as far as the engine character and the performance and putting that power to the ground. Really, really just a fun thing to ride and a fun thing to have a bit of a crack on. Now, certainly I'm a rider who doesn't need or particularly want 200 horsepower, even two up. And while I'd say 50 horsepower is a nice place to be solo, the Transalp's 90 horsepower is a bit meatier and more suitable for two up riding. Or if you're after more thrills on your own, of course. But I wouldn't say no to that after owning all sub 400cc machines for quite a few years now. Importantly, the mid-range torque is great and the Transalp loves to be revved with a nice strong top end as well, and it's super smooth. So while this isn't the most powerful bike in its class, it takes the cake for being able to put that performance to the ground in my mind with a nice little how when you're on it as well. It's not quite as meaty as the T7 for instance, but I prefer how that power goes down to the Norton 901, which I think comes down to feeling a little more restrained maybe than the 901, which again may have been because of the more conservative gravel mode I was using for the off-road stuff. And it is worth mentioning that the gearing on the Transalp does feel quite tall. And that just may be a result of how much torque there is and how far and how hard you can rev it and really enjoy that power plant. I wasn't by any means trying to set any land speed records or anything like that, but I had a good go and I had a lot of fun on this machine. Now backing up the fact that that engine is really, really fun and has quite different characters in the different modes is the simple fact the chassis is also really, really good as well. Like the Hornet, it is very nicely balanced. It's quite a neutral handler. Obviously the front wheel does give this bike when I first jumped on it, I felt like the corners, like the arc of the corners were much rounder, where obviously they were quite a bit sharper on the Hornet. However, once I got used to that different front end, no problems whatsoever. And I could really punt it through the corners and have quite a bit of fun quite easily. So again, uh, really, really impressive. And part of that is the suspension. It's got the show of forks. It's got a mono shock in it. And while it's in some ways a basic suspension system. I was really impressed with the overall ride. It's comfortable. There's no wallowing for me at 75 kilos or so plus gear. I do have all my camera gear with me. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, the suspension setup is actually quite a standout for me. I'd almost say better than the Hornet. On the rear of the Hornet, I found that shock just a little bit, a little bit rough, uh, but Obviously the Transalp is gonna be set up to be a little bit more comfort driven. However, it was still a really nice balance of kind of that sporty, well-supported front end and nice rear performance as well when it came to the most rougher stuff. That extends to being nicely supported on those front brakes. And of course, as I said, because this is the adventure kind of setup, sometimes we do get a softer suspension setup which I didn't find, but I'm a lighter rider. So if you're a significantly heavier rider, you're probably gonna find that that suspension performs a little bit differently for you. And two up will be the other question, because if I was to buy one of these, it's gonna be primarily as a two up machine for a bit of touring and a bit of adventure, because that's kind of the, that's the justification for buying the next bike. And uh, I feel like this should still handle that very, very well, but obviously having a second person on the bike We'll have to see how the shock handles it. 
Talking about overall feel of the bike, the Trans Alp also comes out ahead for me. I'd say the T7 and the Africa Twin, for instance, feel like big dirt bikes, and the Trans Alp being a little more relaxed and low in comparison. Again, just a little more manageable and neutral, obviously not quite as off-road orientated. This bike also doesn't carry its weight down at engine height like the 901 or 890s, so I wondered whether I'd be as impressed because that sets a really high bar in the segment, especially for heavier bikes. And despite that difference, I think Honda have managed to retain the smaller bike feel, much like the Hornet, which doesn't feel like a 750 when you're riding it, and not in a bad way. It's an amazing machine, but it just doesn't feel like you're riding a 750. It feels more like a 4 or 500, as far as kind of that handling agility and overall weight of the bike. On the road side of things, the same is true of the Trans Alp. I didn't feel like I was on a big or top heavy bike, and once I added that tiny bit of extra input to allow for the 19 inch front wheel, carving up the corners was exceptional fun. And my perception of there being much bike in front of me at all was pretty much gone. Most bigger bikes carry their weight really well once you're moving, but you still know you're on a bigger bike, and that was certainly true with the 901. The Trans Up, while obviously a mid-capacity machine, did away with the big bike feel without losing comfort, which I feel like is a really good compromise, particularly for those looking for a not enormous motorcycle, which is going to be really easy to handle. There are a couple of things to note. I did mention it has the electronic system, or it has the ride modes, which really change the character. Uh, you've got the ride modes, you've got traction control, you've got engine brake control, actually, which is a nice little feature to have. You don't have cruise control, you don't have heated grips, you don't have some of the bells and whistles that you might expect. A little bit disappointed it doesn't come standard with a quick shifter, but it's very, very competitively priced, so that's not a surprise. TFT display, non-adjustable forks, I think there's preload adjustability in the rear, uh, and certainly that'll be used to up. You've got a rack on the rear for a top box, which is nice to see. There's no kind of like hidden away mounting system for panniers, which is a bit of a shame. I do like that kind of setup, but it is what it is. We've got rubber clad pegs, which are quite comfortable. Revving the bike hard enough, there were some vibrations through the pegs, but I think when I picked up the bike, it had like 30 Ks on it. So this is by no means run in at all. Um, it is a very, very fresh bike and I'd expect to need to put a couple of thousand Ks on a bike to really kind of let everything loosen up and, and then to see what the engine character is like. But yeah, I, I, I don't think that that's going to make it any worse. I think it's just going to get better, if I'm honest. Switch blocks, quite simple. Obviously, particularly on the right, whereas it's just the starter button. On the left, you've got a mode button, which does let you switch modes on the run. And that's probably the main thing that I'd be worried about. Great screen, good bit of wind protection, very, very clear dash. It's very, very bright, particularly when I was going through some of the darker sections under the trees, it was really glaring out at me. Uh, not that that's a problem at all, but did the job well. Self-canceling indicators, nice little thing that I kept forgetting. I was knocking the horn a couple of times because I just find it, I find the indicator placement just a little bit different than what I'm used to. Uh, there's also a flasher. Yeah, overall, I just, I think for the price, this is an exceptional machine. and. I guess one of the things I do think is all bikes are getting so good these days. However, that mid-range adventure bike, they are getting quite expensive. Like a lot of them are around that 20 to 25K mark. And while they may offer a bit more than the Trans Alp, I think having a more affordable option is really, really important for riders who perhaps are a little bit more road orientated than off-road, which I think this is what this bike delivers. Obviously, it's hard to make a comparison to bikes that I haven't ridden, like the new V-Strom 800. Uh, but from what I understand, this is a little bit more road orientated, which I think is going to be the winning proposition for me. However, I'll try and get a test ride on that V-Strom 800 and do a review on that one as well. Obviously, the one thing I will say is I found this a very easy bike to ride along this gravel road down to St. Albans. It's a very simple, very easy, you know, somewhat adventure style ride. It's not a fire trail, so it's not a slightly more serious ride. However, I did find that the Trans Alp handled everything exceptionally well. And 
that's from the perspective of someone with quite limited adventure and off-road riding. Now obviously I can't give feedback on crazy single trail performance or what more accomplished riders can expect in the off-roading side of things, I just didn't put the bike through that kind of test and I'm still at the basic end of things as far as off-roading and adventure myself, with my experience lying in road riding. So if you're looking for that, you'll need to find someone with that more kind of accomplished background in the off-roading side of things or adventure. Hopefully this will be more helpful for those thinking of jumping into light adventure riding for the first time or grabbing an adventure machine with their primary focus being a bit more road orientated but interested in expanding their horizons a bit because certainly adventure is a great thing to get into and while you can certainly do it on almost any bike realistically speaking, especially the light adventure, I think the Transalp is kind of that perfect machine off the factory floor for offering all of the things that you'd probably want as a first time adventure rider or perhaps just as someone who wants a lighter adventure bike with a bit more experience under your belt. So yeah, certainly this bike delivers on everything I'd want in a road bike, whether that's a naked bike or this kind of more sports touring or light adventure style machine. And then for the off-roading, for the adventure side of things, which is obviously gonna be important uh, to varying degrees to different types of riders. I think again, it delivers really, really well and just gives great value for what you're paying. Obviously price is a big winning point in my mind and that's probably part of the reason, a large part of the reason why I think this is such an exceptional machine. There's very few complaints I could make. I did find the padding on the seat a little bit dense for me and I was losing a little bit of uh, circulation in my behind and so that was kind of the one thing that I would say stood out as uh, not up to the standard of the rest of the bike which is pretty pretty good. And I think it might even have been less comfortable than the Honda Hornet, interestingly enough, because uh, I found the seat on that quite good. Seat height is ideal. I'll jump on in a second for the Ergos. I can almost get both feet down flat. I think in some conditions I can. Uh, getting one foot down, and even if you have to move off the seat a little bit, that'll be quite easy for shorter riders. It's not an intimidating machine. It doesn't feel like a huge machine. It is quite a large machine. But when you jump on and you're riding, it feels very, very manageable. It feels like a smaller machine, which is important for the confidence side of things. And again, like I said, that comes through in the handling because it's a very nice handler. It doesn't feel like a big, top heavy adventure bike. So let's jump on, just give you a quick look. I'm on uneven ground here. It's a little bit raised on this side. I've got both feet down flat. It's quite narrow between the legs. Easy reach to those bars. As I mentioned, good wind protection, good vision through the mirrors, and uh, they are quite wide bars. Obviously for a much smaller rider, you might find that you end up a little bit more stretched out to reach the bars. But I think for people who are a bit shorter and a bit smaller, this is probably gonna be a winning proposition for you because the seat isn't too tall. Uh, getting one foot down is plenty because the bike doesn't feel overly heavy, I would say. And while it's probably not ideal for a brand new rider, I don't think most people are gonna be jumping on one of these as their first bike. I think they're gonna be jumping on it as a second bike. And it's an ideal kind of option for doing that. I don't have a pillion here today, so I can't test the two up capabilities, uh, but I think it'd be all right. I think it'd be pretty good. There's not a lot of other options which I think are as attractive in the price category. Obviously there are some really good options if you push the price significantly higher. Like I really did enjoy riding that Norton 901. However, I think this to me holds its own against that bike in the things that I find important. And while it certainly doesn't have as many bells and whistles and it's not as an impressive package overall, it is significantly better value in my mind, uh, which is really important to me. And I think the Honda reliability should be a big win as well. You can head into Moto Hub and actually test ride this bike and uh, I'd certainly encourage you to go in and check it out in person because it's a really cool machine and it's a you know, great addition to the line from Honda without going to kind of the extremes of the Africa Twin, which is much more hard-nosed off-road. And I think the Transalp also is a really nice step up from the CB500X, which is a great machine in its own right. Uh, but to me, this certainly has a lot more appeal as a fully licensed rider who has maybe slightly higher kind of uh, needs and certainly a little bit more performance for two up is really good over the 500 and I also kind of like the look of this bike quite a bit more than the 500 even though there's only a subtle difference. I'll also do a bit of a quick spec sheet comparison between this and the CV500X so stay tuned for that as well and check out my Hornet review if you're interested in that bike too.
Thanks for Motorhub for lending me the bike and I'll be back soon.